body bags were whore lies. Who is this irresistible creature who has an insatiable love for the dead? Hey guys, so I know you're thinking, why are we seeing your face on a Tuesday? Well, it happens that I'm covering for Clive today because he's really, really busy, but he will be back next week, hopefully, and I will be doing my spot tomorrow as well. So, hey guys, happy Tuesday. This is your Fright Chick speaking, <laughs> and today we are doing the movie that everyone's going to hate me for because they probably wanted to review it. Trick or treat. Oh my god. I love this movie. I really love this movie. This is like the epitome of the Halloween DVD right here. I think a lot of people feel that way as well. So if you don't like this, comment below because I'd love to know why you don't like it. Uh, yeah, so Trick or Treat is an anthology movie. There are four stories. This film came about um, from the director Michael Doherty. Uh, he did a short little movie called Season's Greetings, an animated thing. And then they made this movie out of it with the main character, Sam, who is a little pumpkin-headed pumpkin patch boy. Now, there are four stories in this, an opening and a conclusion, obviously. Uh, we have the opening. We have um, a young woman called Emma and her husband, Henry. Now, I'm not going to be giving away any spoilers in this that I can help. They're, you know, not telling you anyone who gets killed, anyone who survives anything, giving away the twists, because each of them has a twist. So, Emma and Henry are walking down the street and they're coming back from, like, a huge sort of street party that's going on in this one town that the entirety of the movie is set in and she wants to get rid of all of the Halloween decorations right now. She wants to, you know, blow out the candles in all the pumpkins, she wants to take down all the ghosts in her yard because her mum's coming around the next day and she doesn't think that she'll be too pleased to see it. Her husband, however, tells her that she shouldn't be doing this because it's against Halloween rules. She's probably going to anger someone. We see Sam watching the exchange between these two and it's pretty obvious that something bad's going to happen with this freaky little pumpkin kid. Um, yeah, so that's the opening. It's a really awesome little ending to that opening, you know. Let's just say something happens to Emma. She messed with the spirit, something bad happened to her. Okay, so the first story is the principal. We see uh, Principal Wilkins, who, um, you know, looks like a blue collar guy. Just, you know, he goes to his house. We follow this little... I don't even want to say fat kid, but he's a little fat kid. <laughs> this is a little fat kid smashing pumpkins and you know, kicking decorations and just being a little shit, to be honest, on Halloween. He goes up to Principal Wilkins' door and steals some candy that's sitting on his porch. Principal Wilkins comes home and has a chat with the boy. Now, this isn't really a spoiler because it's pretty early on in the story that we see this. Principal Wilkins has poisoned some of the candy and when the kid eats it, he kind of half dies. He's kind of unconscious and puking everywhere and just poisoned, basically. And then the rest of the principal is uh, Principal Wilkins kind of uh, trying to dispose of the body even though he's still alive. He keeps coming back and waking up every now and again and this is angering Principal Wilkins because he's drawing attention to himself in the street and in his house. And it's just really funny because he looks like the guy next door and you can kind of picture your own neighbour doing this and then... You know, what if you looked out the window and saw your neighbour just dragging something across the floor on Halloween? Is there a body in there? There could be, according to this, there could be a body in there. You know, keep your ears out in case you hear someone screaming. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite funny, the principle. It's, it's quite comedic watching the exchange between his small son um, and him. Obviously, when he's trying to keep the body hidden and his small son keeps leaning out the window going, Dad, we have to do the pumpkins. Shut up, shut up. And he's like, go. I think the best bit of it is when he goes, go watch Charlie Brown. And he goes, but Charlie Brown's an asshole. I was laughing so hard the first time I saw that. This kid's like six. Uh, yeah, so that's the principal. Not going to give away the ending. Uh, the next story is my personal favourite the Halloween school bus massacre. Um, it basically centres around these five kids. Schrader, who. Because of your accents, I have been thinking that his name was Traitor the entire time I've watched this, only because I looked it up that it's now Schrader. Uh, Macy, Sarah, Chip, and a young girl who is, um, she's called an idiot savant in the movie, named Rhonda. So she's she's a little bit, um, you know, like, 
she's very introverted, that's it. Uh, they decide to take her down to the local rock quarry that's been closed for several years and tell her the story of the 30-year-old legend of a school bus that was once used to transport um, severely disturbed children in the town to their own private school and about how the parents got fed up with them, they were exhausted, they didn't want them anymore because they're embarrassing, and they paid the bus driver to basically run them off the quarry. Uh, it went a little bit wrong. Uh, they all went off the off the edge of the quarry cliff anyway, and they all died. Now, obviously, that's the legend. There's you know a school bus down there in the darkness with a bunch of mentally disturbed children as ghosts, and uh, basically we watch the five of them venturing off through the quarry you know uh coming across do they come across the ghost do they not come across the ghost i don't really want to give it away uh yeah Rhonda comes into her own because she's very into halloween um i think the uh moment when we see Rhonda's house was amazing in this because she has like a hundred pumpkins all hanging around with really intricate designs in them it's very beautifully shot this movie it's very very halloweeny very very it's, it's just a lot going on there's a lot to look at in it um, yeah, so basically the kids want to play a prank on her and it backfires awesomely. Oh, you, you, if you've seen this, you know what I'm talking about. Um, is it your personal focus? It's mine, let me know. Uh, yeah, so the next story is Surprise Party. Uh, Laurie, uh, played by Anna Paquin, uh, is a 22-year-old girl and she is out with her older sister and two of their friends. We see them... Um, trying on outfits, Halloween outfits, and they're basically going to go to a party. Now, her sister and her friends basically want to hook her up tonight. They want to get her to um, sleep with someone because she's a virgin. They've got no problem reminding her of this, and they want her to come out of her shell. She spends most of her story uh, wandering around, looking at people, thinking, you know, maybe I could be with them. She wants it to be special. So we see her in a little red riding outfit, and the big bad wolf is after her. Does he get her? Does he not get her? Uh, there's a wonderful twist in this. We, I didn't see it coming. I, I kind of did, but I, I didn't see the exact twist coming. I thought it was wonderful. I thought Anna Paquin was brilliant in this. So were the other actresses who played her sister and her friends. Um, yeah, I mean, it's quite creepy because obviously, as a, as a girl, as a woman, you know, we've all we've all walked out on our own in the dark. And um, you can kind of relate to this. So when you see the twist, you just think, oh, that's brilliant. It's wonderful. Yeah, um, I don't want to give away because we have, there's a bit of everything in this. There's a bit of supernatural, there's a bit of revenge, you know, like there's good old sort of, you know, a, a lot of traditions put in this. They always ref, like refer to Halloween traditions, which is good, which, you know, so you learn something because I didn't know a lot of this stuff. I didn't know that Sarwin was the name for Halloween before they started calling it Halloween, which is where we get Sam from because there's a silent M in Sarwin. Uh, yeah, so the last story is just named Sam. And it kind of, even though they're all separate and the opening and conclusion put them all together, uh, Sam does kind of bring um, a previous story in with it. Um, so basically we follow um, an old man who is a recluse. He lives in his house. He hates Halloween, hates everything about it. He doesn't really mind scaring people every now and again, but he's not going to be giving them any sweets. Uh, his name is uh, Mr. Craig. And he's just basically all on his own. Also, when we are watching the stories, we also see previous stories, but from this person's point of view, which I thought was great. I think there's great fluidity in this whole movie. Uh, yeah, so he's at home, he scares a bunch of kids, and then Sam comes and knock in, because he's clearly breaking a lot of Halloween rules here. Sam comes and knock in and decides to teach him a lesson, and that's pretty much the story. There's a lot of, um, you know, him trying to sort of hurt him with... Uh, ingenious ways, little razor blades in the candy, things like that. Um, yeah, uh, I thought the special effects in this were amazing. Uh, that's pretty much all the stories. I can't really give away too much, but that's the gist of what happens in all of them. Then the conclusion obviously shows the aftermath of all of these stories, where everyone is now, etc, etc, etc. The pros of this movie, it's got great fluidity in it like I said you know it flows really well it's really colorful really bright it was acted very well the stories are brilliant there's a little something in there for everybody uh, the cons there wasn't a sequel until now uh, if you're not aware of this this month 
uh, Michael Doty stated that um, there will be a trick or treat too. Oh, I'm so happy. There's going to be a trick or treat too, people. I don't know when it's going to come out. I would assume if they've just green lighted it, it's going to come out next Halloween because they've had this on the book since 2009 and they couldn't get anyone to really, you know, do a script for it, pitch it, nothing. Uh, he did state, as it's noted all over the internet, that he's going to shake it up a bit with this. Uh, if they ruin it, I'm going to be pissed off. If it turns out great, I'm going to be so happy. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much all I'm going to say about Trick or Treat. I've been going on for like 10 minutes now. Yeah, so Trick or Treat, go check it out. Uh, it's really, it, there's something in it for everybody. I'm sure you're going to like it. Like I say, if you don't like it, let me know why. I always want to know why people, you know, think different opinions to me. I think it's great. But yeah, Trick or Treat 2007. I love this film. Happy Halloween, everybody.